What's up, everybody? Charlie Marlowe here talking some Cardinals baseball. Very interesting tweet or interesting poll, I should say, from the great Bill James yesterday. I'm going to put this poll up in a second. If you don't know Bill James, he's essentially the father of baseball analytics. I remember reading Bill James, what's it called, historical baseball abstract years ago. I think, I think 20 years ago where he first started or he he started to write about the win shares stat. And win shares has now evolved where everybody talks about war, wins above replacement. So long story short, Bill James is kind of the guy when it comes to baseball analytics. He basically started that. And uh, I have to say, I'm happy. Bill James actually follows me on uh, X and I follow him. And I saw this I saw this poll and it was super interesting. For two different reasons. The question is very, very intriguing. And then the results so far, you can't beat it. So here's the question. And I'll put up the uh, I'll put up the tweet here or the X, what do you call it? The post. Okay, Bill James online. He writes: the St. Louis Cardinals have had winning seasons in 15 of the last 16 seasons. Was 2023 a one-off or the end? of the end of the previous era in their history. I don't know if that was a typo. So essentially, was 2023 a one-off, or is it the end of the previous era in their history? What do you guys think about that? And so, by the way, this poll still has another about eight hours, nine hours to go before the final results. But when I clipped this off, there was 2,346 votes, and it was exactly... 50-50, 50-50, exactly 50-50. How about that? That it was just a bad year or the end of what they were? Exactly 50-50. I'm also wondering what the results would be of that poll if it was just St. Louis Cardinals fans. Now, I did retweet this, and I think a lot of other people did too, but you got to think Bill James has a national baseball audience, and I would think the results would be a little different there versus a Cardinals audience. And then on X, I think Cardinal fans are pretty negative right now overall. And I'm saying, hey, you're allowed to be. But I just thought the fact that the question's very interesting. The results so far are 50-50. And I did vote in this. And I think it was just a bad year. I think the Cardinals, ever since I've been here, I got here in 2008, even the years they didn't make the playoffs, they were always above 500. So last year was the first year since I've been here that the Cardinals were below 500. And it got real bad. Let's be real. 71 and 91. It got real, real bad. They sold off at the trade deadline. They had a 4A roster in a, in a lot of cases at the end, which is fine. Once, once, you, once you aren't trying to win, just tank. I know it didn't work out with the draft pick, but their strategy was, was right, in my opinion. Once you're bad, just be really bad. Don't half-ass it. So this brings me into another, another question. Though. And by the way, Comment, like, subscribe, share the show, share the channel, share the videos. You see my sponsors right there. Brought to you by Triad Bank, Corner Butchers in Fenton and St. Louis Lawn Care and also St. Louis Equipment, my guy, Tim Jankerson. So how would you how would you vote in that poll? Is it just a bad year or the end of what they were? And then here's the other part of this. So I want to credit everybody who's who's given me some of this, some of these uh, ideas here. Because as I'm, I'm scrolling X yesterday, I also saw a tweet from Benjamin Hockman. And so this was a column from his, from his uh, post-dispatch you know, newspaper, obviously, which I didn't read the column, full disclosure, but I thought his tweet was really interesting also, and it kind of spins into what I, just, what I just put up there with Bill James. So here's the tweet from Benjamin Hockman, columnist, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. I hope the Cardinals understand that the problem wasn't just one year. Yes, of course, last year, was a 71 and 91 disaster, but it's been most of the past nine years. Five total playoff wins, games, not series, that is, and four years they didn't even make the playoffs to begin with. As I've shouted from these pages before, as have other writers on our staff, the esteemed Cardinals are no longer on the forefront. They can still put together winning seasons, sure, but the word winning, in quotes, has changed its meaning around here. A winning Cardinals team used to make it to at least the National League Championship Series. Now a winning team is one that snatches one of the six playoff spots regardless of postseason results. What do you think about that? 
I agree with Benjamin Hockman. I agree with what Hockman said right there. I do think since I moved here, and I can't really speak to pre-2008. I mean, I've read about it. I remember the teams, watched the teams, talked to people who covered the teams. I wasn't here for the vibes and all that of 2004 and 2006. I did cover the 2006 World Series a little bit because I was in Michigan at the time, so I'm covering it from the Detroit Tigers standpoint. But I can't speak to the vibes pre-2008. I will say this. I agree with Benjamin Hockman that the definition of winning, it seems like it has changed for the St. Louis Cardinals front office. I don't think it's changed for the fan base. And I think that's why the fans have been pissed off recently. It wasn't just last year. It was before that when it seemed like the Cardinals were okay and settling for, hey, as long as we get 3 million fans, we're pushing to make the playoffs. We're pushing 90 wins. Maybe we win the Central. Maybe we get a wild card. We'll see what happens. We'll roll the dice. First round playoff exit. Okay, that's a winning season. I do think it's fair to say that the definition of winning from the Cardinals front office has changed. Because when I got here, 09, they're hot. You run into uh, Manny Wood. What do they call it? Manny Wood with the, with the Dodgers. The drop fly ball, of course, with Matt Holliday. Okay, go to 2011, though. 2011 starts the real fantastic run for the St. Louis Cardinals, where it was World Series, NLCS, making it to the World Series, NLCS. Even 2015, the last year of that great run was 100 wins. You ran into a Cubs team that was, look, at that time, the, the Cardinals are going like this, right? And the Cubs are going like this. The 100-win Cardinals like this, the Cubs like this, and boom, Cubs win that series. Next year, Cubs win the World Series. But what do you what do you think about everything I said? And what do you think about the Bill James poll? What do you think about Benjamin Hockman's tweet? The poll's great, and I think Ben's comments sum up how I feel also about the Cardinals. And I think a lot of people in the fan base also feel about this team because they were ticked off even before last year about, hey, let's push. Let's not just settle to win what is often one of the worst divisions in baseball. Let's go higher. Let's try to be elite on paper. Of course, anything can happen when you get into the playoffs. Anything can happen. We all know that. I think sometimes I think sometimes the Cardinals, you know, they benefited from those great runs in 2006 and 2011 where they were not the favorite, but they got healthy. They got right. A couple things went their way. They played their best baseball. At the end, they won World Series. Those years to me are, are more of the outliers when I, when I look at baseball. Yeah, can a team like the Diamondbacks get hot at the end, get in, make it to the World Series? Sure. Look at the Rangers. The Rangers, the team that beat them. Rangers spent a lot of money. Then they added also at the deadline, Jordan Montgomery. Even moves like Chris Stratton, you know, a, a solid reliever from the Cardinals. But you know they spent tons of money on Marcus Simeon, on, uh, on Corey Seager so on and so forth. Jacob DeGrom, we didn't even freaking pitch for the team. So look, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. The Cardinals, we know they're not a big market team. They're spending about the same amount the last several years, whatever the number is, you know, 160, 170, 180. With the, with the 40 man, it gets close to 200. Uh, there's all different ways to kind of look at that at the different websites. But I think it's fair to say, even when the Cardinals say we've increased spending, it's barely. It's barely. I did this yesterday on the radio. I went and looked back and the projected payroll for 24 and in the last several years, it's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same if you look at it, whatever that number is. And again, you can you can make it look different based on the 26-man roster and the 40-man roster and what the roster projection would be at the end of the year. Clearly, it's different last year because the Cardinals traded off assets that were making money like Jack Flaherty. Jordan Montgomery. But I think it's fair to say the Cardinals have pretty much spent about the same amount of money in the last three, four years or so. And if there's been an uptick, it's been barely. And uh, if that's the case, I, I don't even mention it. I, I wouldn't say we're going to spend more if all of a sudden they spend 2% more because that's not enough to even mention. The Cardinal fans are going to be ticked about that. But it seems like, not just seems, it's true. Baseball has spent way more. All these other teams are spending way more and the Cardinals are standing pat in terms of their payroll, which is why if they used to be more kind of top third-ish in payroll, if they were, let's say, ninth, 10th, 11th, whatever it was, which I think is fair, 
But then you saw last year, they fell right to the middle. They were right in the middle there, right about 15, 16 in payroll, as they've kind of spent the same amount of money, but other teams are spending more and more and more. And we know, look, that doesn't mean you're going to win. You saw the Mets, you saw the Padres. That doesn't mean you're going to win. Yankees didn't have a great season last year. But I, I think we can all look at the Cardinals and say every once in a while, just a little uptick, just kind of go for it a little bit. Just go for it a little bit and see what happens and, and put yourself on paper in a better position to win a playoff series and make a deep run. We all know it's not going to happen every year, but on paper, Cardinal fans are smart. Even when they lined up a couple years ago against the Phillies, nobody liked that matchup on paper. Why is that? Because it was Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola versus Jose Quintana and Miles Michaelis. No disrespect to Quintana and Michaelis. Really solid, dependable pitchers, but they're not the guys like a Wheeler and a Nola who can just straight up shove. And all of a sudden, they're going to go six, seven innings, strike out nine to 11 guys. On paper, on paper, Cardinal fans would like to see the team going into a playoff series and say, all right, I feel, I feel good about the prospects of this team. I think it's fair to say that in the last several years, everybody's like, all right, pretty good. 90 wins, one a week central. We'll see what happens. We'll get in there. I've gotten a lot of comments here on YouTube also and on X about, hey, it, it's not just last year. And that's what Ben Hockman talked about. They're like, you know, go back to the previous couple years, okay, and, and give the Cardinals credit. But Albert Pujols went buck wild the year, the year of, uh, of what, of obviously 2022, and just carried the team. Now, give the Cardinals all the respect in the world for bringing Albert back and Albert for doing that. But also, you're talking about a team that, was was around 500, and again, they're adding, they're adding, of course, Montgomery and Quintana that year to get them over the top. The previous year, that's a 17 game winning streak. Again, that's a team that uh, around 500 or so. But give them credit; they do add John Lester, they do add Jay Happ. Nobody was super excited about that. Uh, nobody really thought they were elite, but they made a nice run, 17 wins, whatever it was, and you run into the the Dodgers in the one game playoff. But, but again, on paper, nobody thought the Cardinals were going to make that deep run. So I've talked long enough. I think, what do you guys think about the, uh, the two things I showed you the poll? Is this just a bad year or the end of what they were? And I guess definitions matter because to me, it was just a bad year, but that being said, it wouldn't surprise me if the Cardinals this year are just a little bit above 500. You know, I think the Cardinals, I don't know if I'm ready to even, if I'm ready to uh, say what I think the Cardinals record-wise is going to be. I think you have to see what the division ends up doing. And also this balanced schedule. I was looking at the schedule the other day because a buddy of mine just got a job as the assistant hitting coach with the Cleveland Guardians. So I wanted to see when the Cardinals were playing the Guardians. They are playing them at, at home at Bush Stadium in September. But I started to look through the schedule. It is a it's a whole different ball game now than back in the day when you're playing the what do they play central teams 19 times. So I want to look at the schedule. I want to see what the other central teams do. I don't think the Cardinals are going to be bad. I do think they're going to be above 500. I don't know yet if I'm ready to put a win total out there. A lot of this also has to do with if they add at the trade deadline, but I think I think again even the definition of 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 what the Cardinals are, bad year, good year. Couple couple winters ago, last winter, we're saying we want more. And now I'm saying, okay, the Cardinals might just be a 500, a little bit above team. I don't know. We'll see. Like I said, what do you guys think win total right now? If you had to, if you had to put it on right now, I mean 85. Are you pushing 90 yet? Look, we have still two months. We have two, two and a half months to talk about all this. So once we get closer to the season, we can do our projected win totals and all that. But I do think the expectations have dropped for the Cardinals. Um, so let me know. Bill James poll and Ben Hockman's tweet. Agree? Disagree? How would you vote? Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Did you enjoy the winter warm-up videos I put up? They're actually audio. Jeff Jones got me those. Thank you, Jeff. You guys weren't really watching those very much. I'm not going to lie. Not a lot of views. So I don't know if you uh, just aren't into it or what's going on. I think I have one more. Daniel Descalzo I'll post. But uh, yeah. Hit me up, comment, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks to my sponsors, Triad Bank. Been banking there for about four or five years. Anything commercial lending for my real estate rental property business, Triad Bank. 
best thing I ever did for my uh, rental property business. Corner Butcher, been working with Mike Diffley and family for about five years. They're fantastic out there in Fenton, new location in Ellisville. They got the uh, restaurant in Fenton. The Chop House is fantastic. And then my guy, Tim Jankerson, St. Louis Lawn Care. I've been working with him for about four or five years as well. He also has St. Louis equipment for all of your mower needs, mower repair, small engine, mulch, rock, everything. They do it all. All right. Thanks, guys. Peace out.